Good morning. We're going to learn how to graph with Excel. We're starting with the Graphing with Excel handout that you have, and what we're going to do is graph some temperature vapor pressure data using the clausius clapeyron equation to try to figure out the enthalpy um, of vaporization for this liquid, as well as some other data points. So what we need to do is open up Excel and type in left axis or left um, column temperature in degrees Celsius and vapor pressure in TOR. If you'd like to figure out where the degree sign is using um, the Microsoft programs, it is under insert and symbol and you can type in a degree, but obviously you don't need to. It's just a label to keep track of things. So type in on the left temperature in degrees Celsius and vapor pressure in TOR. Once you've got that done, we're going to graph it. To graph it, we have to select our data. To select the data, you're going to take and you're going to left click on the top left, the top of the x-axis, go across and go down so that you've selected all of the data. Include the labels because it gives you a little bit more information on your chart. Once you've done and you've selected your data, you need to pick a scatter plot. We're never going to use lines because we're going to add a best fit line instead. So click the scatter plot, go down here to the data or the scatter plot that has no lines on it again and select it. What we have now is a nice clear graph of our data, vapor pressure versus temperature. Versus means that it's on the x axis, so vapor pressure will be on the y, versus the temperature means temperature is on the x. It's an exponential, which is what we would expect from our um, phase diagrams of the vapor pressure temperature data. We can take and put in a best fit line, even though it's not, quote, a straight line, it is certainly a nice clean exponential to do this. Right click on a data point. When you do that, it will select your data point and you'll get some options. And we can mess with it all we like, but what we really want to do is just add a trend line. The trend line is the best fit line. So go down, select, add a trend line. Notice it gives you a linear line first, and you can take these boxes that give you your options and move them so you can see your graph, and you can go and select different options. I can try exponential, I can try a power series, I can do all sorts of things, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a nice exponential graph. So exponential fit is here. That gives me a nice line, but I would really like to have the equation for the line so I could use it. So click here on the display the equation on the chart. Notice the equation is now available. I can grab that equation and move it, and I can close it, and now I have a graph with an equation. I could take and plug um, numbers into this equation. I could put a value of x in, in degrees Celsius, and using this equation I could get the vapor pressure in TOR. But what I really like for this data is instead of temperature in Celsius and vapor pressure in TOR and an exponential, I'd like linear. So to do that we need to take and we need to modify our data. So we're going to do two things. We're going to take our temperature and put it in Celsius and then we're, excuse me, into Kelvin and then we're going to put the temperature as 1 over Kelvin because we know that's our fit or the nice straight line using the clausius clapeyron So new, new column, put temperature and then put parentheses Kelvin or K or whatever makes you happy. The key here is we're going to let Excel do our math for us. When we let Excel do our math, we have to type in an equal sign because that's when we start our mathematical function. So type in in the cell where we want our first temperature in Kelvin, right below where we've labeled our column, and hit an equal sign. To go from Celsius into Kelvin, all we need to do is take our number, Celsius minus 9.4, and add the conversion to Kelvin. And so to do that, we're going to, again, let Excel do our math. So we're going to select the cell, the box that has the minus 9.4 in it. We're not going to type in minus 9.4 because if we do any changes, we'd have to retype in our data. Here, what we're going to do is if we make any modifications on our chart, we will automatically modify our temperature in Kelvin, making our lives much easier. So select the minus 9.4. Take an add, so hit the plus, 273.15, and then hit enter. If we hit enter, it will have done the math. Now notice the math in that cell is up in this f of x line, the formula bar, so we know what we've done. If there's a typo, you can always find it. Now we could take and do the same thing with the next column down with each number, but Excel allows us to apply whatever mathematical function we did on one cell to other cells. So to do that, 
Notice that as you move your mouse around, the pointer is a open cross. If you go directly onto one of these cells, you notice you can change the size and it gives you the little arrows on the end of your mouse or the pointer. But if you move the pointer to the bottom right corner of the cell, it gives you a solid cross. The solid cross is what we're going to use to fill. So take and move your pointer to the bottom of the right hand corner of the cell, left click and drag down drag down to the bottom of that um, column and we have now applied the mathematical function in uh, the A2 into the A3 and if you select down you'll notice it changes your um, cell number and we've got the temperature in Kelvin. Now we're going to do a couple more things. We're going to do 1 over the temperature in Kelvin because that's what we're going to need for our straight line. To do this again we're going to let Excel do our math after we label our column. So 1 divided by the temperature so again in Kelvin, so I'm going to put in Kelvin, and now I'm going to do the math. 1 over temperature just means 1 divided by the temperature in Kelvin. It's still math, so I have to hit an equal sign. I'm going to put equal, and then 1 divided by. Again, I don't want to type the number in. I want to let it, Excel do this for us, so I'm simply going to click the cell of C2. And that is going to give me 1 divided by C2. I can tell that from my function bar. I'm going to hit Enter. Quick remembrance here, if you ever make a mistake on this, realize that Control z undoes whatever it is you've just messed up, and you need to probably practice that because it's very handy, otherwise you have a nice panic. So, move your mouse, such that the pointer is at the bottom right hand of the cell, and then click and drag down. It will fill each of these cells with 1 divided by the number to its right, and you can always look and press the, or click on the cell to see what you've done mathematically. All right, do a couple more things while we're at this. I'm going to just copy the vapor pressure data into the E column. So I'm just going to click and drag down, Control C, and then put it into the column E. So click it, Control C, and then Control Paste. And again, you can choose this the button Paste here, or just Control V to put it in. I could graph this as well. I could graph the 1 over the temperature in Kelvin versus the vapor pressure. And in fact, you can graph most any of this. So let's try it. If I want to graph 1 over the temperature in Kelvin versus the vapor pressure in Tor, I'm going to just select that data. Again, click and drag over and across. I'm going to go to Insert, pick the scatter, pick the particular scatter that has only markers and no lines, and then I'm going to graph it. And you go, OK, fantastic. Now I've got an inverted one, inverted or backwards exponential. But Excel doesn't care. We can fit anything. So we're going to take, right click on a data point, go down to add a trend line, and we're just going to try to see if we can fit it with something. Now notice, we have a nice clean fit with the exponential. And you can pick to see what fits best. Exponential fits great. We're going to put the equation on the chart because we always want to be able to use the equation for this to do our math. We can move our equation to where we can see it, which is what I've just done. Close it off, and now I have a graph that has 1 over the temperature versus the vapor pressure. Now notice most of this graph, if I take a look at it, is empty space, and we're going to fix that. To get rid of the empty space, I can get rid of the data legend because it doesn't tell me anything anyways, so I'm just going to delete it. So I'm just going to click on it and then hit the delete button. And now I have this massive empty space over here. Excel likes to start the graph with a 0, 0. If we want to get rid of the starting with a 0, 0, we can take and we can format our axes. So I'm going to go down and format my x-axis so that I can um, start at something more reasonable. So if I look at my data, notice my smallest temperature in 1 over the temperature is just 0 0.002394. So I'm going to start over here closer to 0 0.002 rather than 0. To do this, right click on the x-axis data. When you have done that, we're going to go down to Format Axis. Again, go to here, put your mouse so the pointer is on one of these data labels, right-click, Format Axis. Automatically, if you look at our values, um, Excel starts at 0. So instead of starting at 0, we're going to click over here where it says Fixed, and we're going to start at our 0 .002. And that should take and get rid of it. 
Also, if we wanted to, we could say where the y-axis crosses at. That's another option. But either way, what I have now is a nice graph where the graph takes up the whole page. That is desirable. We certainly don't want to, you know, publish a mostly empty graph. So I'm going to move this to the side and actually do what I wanted to do, which is take and graph. 1 over the temperature on the x versus... Um, Vapor pressure over here, so I'm going to put natural log, because this is what we want for the clausius clapron is a natural log of the vapor pressure. So I need a new column where it says natural log of the vapor pressure. I am going to fill this column with the natural log of the vapor pressure data. Again, letting Excel do my math. So equals natural log, because that is the Excel function for this. Excel requires a parenthesis, and notice it tells you it needs a parenthesis for this. And again, I'm not going to put the number in. I'm going to put in the cell. Click on E2, end parenthesis, and press Enter. I'm going to fill the column with this map, so I'll move my pointer to the bottom right, click and drag down, and now I have the natural log of the vapor pressure. What I would like to plot is one of the temperature on the x-axis versus this on the y. So I'm going to start with 1 over x. If I take and just click and drag across all of this, I'm also going to include the vapor pressure straight here, and I've got three columns, which I don't want. I only want to graph 1 over the temperature versus the natural log of the vapor pressure. Excel allows us to do this. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to click and drag down the 1 over the temperature. And then I'm going to press the control button, and I'm going to hold the control button down while clicking and dragging down the natural log of the vapor pressure. This allows me to select two separate columns. Again, whatever column is on the left will be the x-axis. Whatever column is on the right will be the y-axis. So I want to graph this now. To graph, insert, scatter, scatter with no points, and I'm going to get this mess. And we're going to have to take, put in a trend line, and make this look pretty. So, let's finish this up. To make this look pretty, we have to be able to see or know what is on our axis. So, we're going to go over here. And by the way, notice if you are actually in your chart, which I'm in right now, you have a toolbar that talks about your chart, insert, page layout, formulas, etc. If I click on my graph, I now go into chart tools. And if I go into chart tools, I can take and mess with my chart tools and do all sorts of fun things. There's design options. I can add um, data. We can take and do a layout. A layout allows us to put in um, a legend, access title, grid lines, all sorts of things. We can format it and change what stuff does. So we're going to go to layout because it's going to help us. Well, actually, let us go to design first. If we go to design, we can take and put in our, our axis and title on this. So if I'm going to click the far left on the chart layout, it gives me a title and axis labels. If I click on these, I can take and put a chart title. So I'm going to call this Dr. B's graph. When I do this, please notice that the title shows up in the um, math or that function, this f of x line. And once I hit enter, it will show up on my curve. Axis title, the y-axis is the natural log of the vapor pressure. So let's just type in natural log of the vapor pressure. And again, it types up in this x of f of x line. And when you hit enter, it goes onto your chart. On the x-axis, I'm going to put 1 over temperature in Kelvin. Again, it's typing up here in the f of x line. Hit enter, and it goes in. I'm going to get rid of a bunch of stuff, and I'm going to add grid lines because we may need them when we go and we do other data, particularly in a couple of weeks when we do um, molar mass by freezing point depression. So, layout. If I go to layout, I can add grid lines. So, again, in chart tools under layout, grid lines, if I click on grid lines, I can add both primary and I can add um, a primary and um, major and minor grid lines on both the x and the y axis, so I'm going to do that so I've got some nice grid lines. I need to do two more things. I need to get rid of the empty space and add a trend line. So I'll start with a trend line. Right click on one of the data points, add a trend line. This is clearly linear, and if it's nice and linear, we leave it at linear and we display the equation on the chart. It usually dumps it in the middle of the chart, so I'm going to click and move it so where I can see it. I'm going to close this off. I'm going to delete my legend because it just occupies space, and then I'm going to get rid of all of this extra space in here. To do this, 
right click on one of these data points format the axis once okay now we need to take and format our axis so format the axis go to minimum and instead of starting at zero we're going to start at point oh oh two once we have